Welcome everybody. Thanks for coming. It's a really nice day out, at least where I'm at. So uh, hopefully similar for others. So try to keep this as to the point as we can so that everybody has the opportunity to get out and enjoy the weather. Uh, but the topic of today is dynamic notifications for SOLIDWORKS PDM. Um, some of you who have been with PDM for a while may have known that the uh, capability to send notifications to um, users and groups based on data card variables hasn't really been available for quite some time. Um, and it turns out that it sort of was, but it was sort of required some construction. Um, but in addition, in 2019, they did add a feature that pretty much is equivalent to dynamic notifications as well. So we'll cover both of those. The majority of you will probably have most of your needs served by the feature added in 2019. However, uh, there's some extra flexibility and customizability in the other method that involves XML that we'll cover here as well. So a little bit about me. My name is Pierre Larson, um, CSWE, as well as a data management professional. Um, I've been working with PDM for about eight years, since around 2012, doing support, rotations, data migrations, some custom work with the API. Uh, and that's my email. And I've been introduced first to SOLIDWORKS since 2006. Uh, been in the VAR community for some time. I was with Fisher until uh, uh, we were a merger with CATI. And, and now I'm on the inflow team, helping with implementations and migrations for PDM. And, so forth. So uh, basically our goal is to notify different people about different events, maybe ECOs, maybe projects and so forth. And it's possible to have a data card such as this one where we're tracking, you know, do we want to notify people in this department who in that department needs to get notified or maybe they did a sign off and then afterwards we want to notify them about the status of this ECO. And in the past, this generally involved uh, complicated workflows or just blanket notifications to the entire group. Perhaps the user who is transitioning the file would be relied upon to make the selections as to who needs to get notified. And if they didn't make those selections, nobody got notified. Uh, or perhaps complicated and, and expensive add-ins were also needed. So we're looking at some alternatives here today. So like in, at SOLIDWORKS World, we did the sort of structure of like what are the key takeaways. There's actually going to be one additional, which is the 2019 feature that we'll look at as well. But um, you might be able to take some of what you see here today and apply it to other things with these features that are sort of building blocks to this dynamic notifications end goal here. So this is what we're trying to get. Simple targeted, automatic, based on data card values, and free, out of the box, more or less. Um, <clears throat> and then these are the two different directions that we're going to go with that. So let's talk all about the conditional notifications feature in 2019 that's new. Um, some of you may not have looked at that yet. Some of you might have. And essentially, we can just go to any transition uh, in the workflow and go to the notifications tab and then we can add a conditional notification choose a recipient variable where we're going to look for either the full name the login name or a group name value based on uh, whatever is stored in your database of your vault that you can see in the admin tool and then optionally we can add a condition to say well we don't want to send this notification to that group or user Every situ single situation, maybe we want to have a checkbox to say whether or not we do or don't want to do that. So we can have that on the data card. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop up my default admin tool and just kind of show you exactly what that looks like here. So I have a very simple workflow. Starting a new project, submit that project for approval or review. My notifications tab and we have this add conditional notification button this is what that looks like so <clears throat> the first tab is pretty much all defined based on the transition that you're using the second tab is who's get, getting 
gets notified. You can have um, static users and groups like always, or, <clears throat> or you can have a variable determine who is going to get notified. Now the, uh, the neat thing about this is that with the conditions here, in this case I'm saying, well, this variable notify project manager must equal one. Uh, I, I could have, you know, a static group in here as well and, and have this enabled or disabled based on this condition. But essentially that's how that's configured. If we take a look at my data card for the files that I'm sending through this workflow. I have my project manager variable here. I have a checkbox for whether or not I want to notify project manager. And by default, I've set that to yes, I do want to notify those people. So that's basically going to be the typical notification um, in appearance when that flows through there and you notify somebody. But let's go ahead and move on and take a look at what else we can do. So if we wanted to essentially get the same dynamic notification feature, but have the ability to completely customize what the notification looks like, then we can go further in and leverage a couple other features. So some of you may have heard that you can customize what notifications look like. The thing about how that customization works is that it is for all of those type of notifications, such as change state. And um, so it's it, there's no way to have like, oh, I want to have this style of notification for this project, or this style for that project, or product line, or something along those uh, lines there. So essentially what we're doing is we're creating an XML file that we're feeding to PDM through the data import rules. And we're using dispatch to create that. And in the end, we get an output email that gets sent either to a user or a group that can be based on data card info. The way this works is the XML file is created, it gets planted in a folder, and then the PDM database server service reads that folder periodically, usually about once a minute, to see if there's any eligible XML files there for us to see, and then converts that into an email and sends it out. Now that could be typical PDM database notification, or that could be an SMTP-based email, which could go to something like Gmail or Office 365. In addition, these emails are uh, HTML friendly, so you can have basically anything that you could have in a web page show up in there. So if you were to look at the um, installation file set, you'll notice that there's a file here called notifications.xml that has this format is what we're going to use. And I've replaced some of the text in here to kind of indicate what we're going to use as like we're, we're basically planning to inject information into one of these files or a copy of one of these files to generate this XML file. And then um, once that's created, then we'll get an email sent to whoever we want with the subject line we want, the content that we want. So really great amount of flexibility. So there's a feature in Dispatch called Generate Parameter File. And essentially, the way it works is if you create a dispatch variable, and you have that inside the text of that file, so it's like an ASCII text file or just a text file, it will convert, let's say, text that looks like this, which is the name of one of my dispatch variables, into a value such as a project manager. Since we're going to be le uh, relying upon the PDM database server service to send notifications, these solutions are handy to write down if you have trouble seeing these notifications get processed, these XML files get processed. Um, typically, it could be just a restart, or maybe the service is stopped, or in some rare cases I've seen that it maybe isn't installed anymore. Uh, perhaps somebody did a server load and 
somebody forgot to install it, that sort of thing. So this piece is really important. So I'm going to just go ahead and double check to make sure that it's running. And there it is, helper service for SolidWorks PDM5 wall databases. And it's running. You have the ability to put in Kinesio hyperlinks or PDM hyperlinks that you might be familiar with with uh, PDM notifications where you can click on a link and it'll browse to the file, it'll open the file in eDrawings or um, pull up the properties of the file or just straight up open it. <clears throat> um, but because this is in an XML file, we have to encode HTML as X or inside of XML. In my example, I've already done all of this, but if you wanted to further customize how these notifications work, then there's some extra work to go with that. But in short, uh, the, the less than symbol, the sort of bracket, and the right than symbol, and quotes, and the ampersand, they all get encoded, and so it looks very different when you're done. So in essence, uh, you can even download a set of files yourself with a pre-built vault um, at that link there, tinyurl.com slash email monkey, where you can sort of play around with this in a sandbox of your own choosing. Um, in short, if you were to do that, make sure that for that vault, you actually call the vault email monkey, because uh, I had somewhere in there, my XML files had it hard-coded email monkey. Um, but it can be modified to use a variable and it'll work. It's just going to be a little bit harder to troubleshoot the first time around because of the level of complexity. So let's take a look at um, our vault setup to do this. I'll show you the import rule and I will then take a look at the dispatch scripts that I'm using, how this all comes together. Then we'll go ahead and go through an example where I create a project from a template, set the project manager, send it through the workflow, and then we check our email. Okay, so in the admin tool, I want to go and take a look at data import and export. Import, I've created an email import rule. And there's not much to set here other than I'm looking in this folder um, for files. I don't know if that's 100 minutes. That should be one. <laughs> Um, and, and this is going to be relative to the server. So if you're setting this up on your machine, you may have to work with IT to identify a folder on the server, or it could be a network share, such as my server slash share slash XML import, that sort of thing. IT can help you out with that, or anybody that's in, in control of that system. Okay, so let's take a look at dispatch. Again, I've got these scripts and, and everything set up for you in that link, tinyurl.com slash email monkey. Um, so I'm only gonna look at it at a sort of high level because um, I do admit that it's a bit detailed. So, um, can uh, set the project manager via the template, or you can set it up via a dispatch so that, you know, in my case, you can either choose the project manager when you create the template right away, or when you submit for approval, it'll ask you again through dispatch, hey, what do you want as a project manager? So in this case, I have a combo box that says these are the people that you can choose as potential project managers. That's going to populate a variable. Then I'm going to set the data card variable for those files. So we'll do a block of all documents, we'll check each of them out, set the variable, check them in, and then we're done. Now, in order to have uh, emails that have hyperlinks in them, you have to know the document ID and the folder ID. There's just no way around that. So I've sort of cheated and sort of gone outside of our, we're not using any API uh, 
I'll just say we're not using any expensive API to pull that off or custom add-ins or programs. And I did write a very simple program, which is included in that file set that will populate the data card variables. So the way that works is, let me just open up make a copy of my vault here. Under templates, I have save doc ID to card and doc ID to card console. Uh, so one of these has a GUI and the other one just gets called by dispatch to run and populate the data card variables for my files. So if I look at some of my existing uh, projects, existing files, let's take a look at the data card there. Um, I have a tab called internal data where I have variables for doc ID and folder ID. So when these files get created, dispatch calls my program to run, tells it the path of the file that just got created, and it will then just copy the data of you know, what's the document ID, what's the folder ID that it's sitting into, uh, sitting in, so that this is useful later for us to have uh, usable hyperlinks. to dispatch then. So basically what occurs then is I call, um, have this occur during the add operation. You can customize to say, oh, I only want to be for certain file types, or perhaps I want it to be under my projects directory, dot, docx, whatever. For now, I'm just doing it very simple because this is a proof of concept. And, and this dispatch will get called when any file gets added to the vault. Dispatch will then say, okay, I want to make sure that I cache this application that's sitting in the template files area. And I've defined that path in here. And then when I call the application, I say, okay, the name of the vault is such and such. Here's the path to the file. That's the name of the doc ID variable I want to store the doc ID in, and that's the name of the folder ID variable I want to store the folder variable in, folder ID in. So that just happens automatically behind the scenes. We don't really have to think about that too much once that's created. And then I have two different ways of creating emails. Uh, one is the more basic, where we leverage the generate parameter file. <clears throat> So I have a section in here for debugging. Currently that is off. So we just get straight away and, and start. And basically I say, pull the template file, create a new file, give a unique name if you want, and that's it. It automatically will replace text in that file with any variables that I've created. I admit I've created a number of variables. Um, in this original, we'll say iteration, I actually put in the HTML text or the XML text in the dispatch, which I don't really recommend. So we'll look at the second script where I don't have that in here and instead it's all in the files. But essentially I have a section called the menu and it's got the, this is where I've got the vault name hard coded. Uh, it's got the XML encoded HTML in there. And it basically just populates all this. So let's, let's take a look. Um, might make a little more sense if we looked at my template file. So this guy is calling notification full name. So this is basically a modified version of the file that SolidWorks provides to us. All the way down here, I've made it really quite simple. I've got things like date, the name of the vault, the sender is, what the subject is gonna be. 
and I have a header and the actual message um, and then the recipient which is going to be the full name of the user um, and basically all of that information is injected into this file this is copied to where I need it to go and then an email is created There's a bit of a limitation with dispatch where it processes things on a file by file basis. So in essentially thing that we're trying to, um, we'll just call it a nuance of the situation with this particular dispatch script. If you have five files that are going to go through a transition that triggers this dispatch script, going to get five emails. So I did manage to find a way to get one email for all of the files. And that's what I call the parsed email. And essentially, I just kind of broke it up. I generate a few different parameter files. But um, if they're going to the exact same destination, you can tell it to append. I essentially have a uh, the beginning portion of the email and then I have a section for each file so like hyperlinks for each file let's say and I just append all of that together and then I have the ending of the XML file when everything is said and done so in short here we have for all documents so we, we create create the uh, pre, I, I call it the, the header section or, or the pre-dispatch XML section. Then we have the body header. Then we have the body for each file. So we get several of these for however many, however many files we're processing. And then we have the body footer and then the final bit. So what I do is I create all of this together in a sort of temporary location. And then once I'm completely done, sort of amassing my final XML file, it gets copied to the final destination where uh, PDM is looking for it. So let's take a look at those templates briefly. I know this is all going really fast. Um, and unfortunately, this is probably something that you'll just have to sort of dissect on your own a little bit. But I'm also, of course, willing to answer questions throughout this. But let's take a look at my templates. So I have my uh, notification XML file for the pre section. So, this is basically all of the stuff at the very beginning. And then it says, you know, who the sender is and the subject. And then it gets like just the start of the message, but not the actual message. So, then I'll say, okay, let's go to the body header. So, this is where I have. HTML encoded as XML, and um, it's things like my company logo, um, the following projects have been assigned to you, operation was performed by somebody, and uh, let's see, and then we have our headers of what's essentially a table, a table section. So we got our file name, the latest properties. You'll all see it in a moment though. So let's take a look at the body itself. This is basically my hyperlinks for open the get properties, history, and explore of whatever document it is. And I have encoded here doc ID, file path, folder ID, all that good stuff. After that, I have the body footer. There's not really much there. That never changes. Then we have the final piece where it just kind of like completes the syntax of the XML file and tells us who the recipient is. So when we pack all of this together, I know it's all crazy. There's just so much going on here. Let's just take a look at what some of these emails can look like. I have the following project has been assigned to you. Operation was performed by Sam Gamgee. Here's my logo. And then 
and there is my hyperlink information for looking at the files. Let's go ahead and click on one of these and see if it'll browse us there. There we go. Popped me right into the vault. I'm looking at the file. Now the point that I'm trying to make here about this method, why it's even worth looking at all of this complicated detail is because if you wanted to customize your notifications so that you had five different styles, you could do that. Because um, there might be some larger vaults that you have several different product lines in or even several different sub companies in that you want to customize how things look. So in this case, I've got a grill company, just kind of generic. And you can do with it what you want. So it's very basic. Like this SolidWorks PDM notification, that I just threw in there. You could make that anything you wanted it to be. Um, and essentially, what you can do is the easiest way is to copy this out. So we'll just type in, let's see if there we go. So now I've got this file open as a sort of email file. I should be able to copy this information out to a general um, HTML editor. So let's go to one of those. So I'm going to just take everything that they have here, delete it, and paste in my notification, and boom, you've got everything that you ever wanted. You can customize it over here. You can see that we've got sort of table layout like that. So if we start to think about, well, how did Peer put together all these different XML templates? So I have the beginning, then I have the beginning of my table, then I have for each file that I parse together, and then finally anything after that, which is essentially this stuff. So this way, you can customize exactly what you want. It's not that hard to do. Um, it just takes a little futzing around with, and then you're ready to create your final style. So let's go ahead and actually do it, just so you can see what this looks like. I'm going to go into my vault, right-click, choose New Project, pop up and I must say this is the uh, Grill Master 3000 and I'm going to assign this to Gandalf the Grey there's the most recent project here Grill Master 3000 we've got Gandalf the Grey my internal data has been populated already. So then I can go ahead and say, all right, I'd like him to take a look at it, submit this for approval. Please approve. And then this notification comment here is for the internal um, PDM feature conditional notifications. Go ahead and hit OK. This is my dispatch saying if I didn't select project manager yet, I'm going to do that now. So I'll just set it to the same person. OK, so now we're in pending approval. Let's go ahead and log in as Gandalf and see what we find. Now it may take a moment or two for the notification to come through. So I'm just going to double check on my service here. Looks like it's running. But if I wanted to sort of make things occur immediately, like for a demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and try to restart the service. 
location. I can also take a look at my folder path where I'm taking care of these uh, locations. So if I go into my temp folder, I go into uh, XML. I think this is from a previous test. Here we go. Import. So the, the file's missing, which means that it either didn't build or it did build and it got processed. This is one from a few months ago that I was testing out. Okay. I heard a sound. That means I got a notification. So this is the conditional notification feature that came through by Samwise Gamgee. I'm going to go ahead and close that. See if I got the other one as well or not. seeing it, but I've got a notification icon. I'm going to try logging out and logging in. So while you're logging back in, um, look like there was one question that popped over. Um, about how many hours do you think you had in this in, in this, this template that you're working on? Well, a lot of the time was research and just understanding what I could do. So I started very small and was like, can I just send any notification at all? And then, uh, and then I was like, okay, well, can I send a notification that is one for a collection of files? And so that's when I discovered, oh, well, the generate parameter file has the feature to um, append. And so that was sort of the magic bullet for that. Okay. So very similar when I, when I start going on walkabout for, for trying to figure out APIs. Yeah. Yeah, basically. And then after that, I was like, I was, I was almost ready to present, you know, a few weeks out of presenting at SolidWorks World, and I was like, well, what about notification uh, hyperlinks? And I was like, I was going to put that as an optional feature, but I'm like, everybody does that already. So I better just figure this out. So how many hours? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, but once I figured it out, it, it was it was a lot faster. I could customize it and get whatever I wanted, but um, it was just a matter of getting the research together. So I, I'm trying to recall. I think the the one where I actually parsed them together, if I was to do that, which had the logos and everything, I think I actually did not configure that to happen on a, a transition. So let's see if we get that. Yeah, there we go. Ggray.xml. See if we get that to disappear and then come in. Yeah, there we go. So I, I think that was just my bad. I just didn't have it automated. But here we go. The notification came in just fine. And then I've got my, my hyperlinks. Plus, you know, if I wanted to do it where I, I'm going to get notified about all of these, that's the real key, then I'll just do that. Uh, oh, it's it's complaining because I already have one in there. Let's uh let's just shuffle that one off. Oh no, nope, it's already processed. <laughs> okay, well then we'll get to do it again. Um, so now you can see where like I'll have a single notification with multiple files involved. So we'll do that. See that the XML file popped in. Looks really busy and complicated. I know, at first glance. Uh, but there's a rhyme and reason, and then eventually we'll get that email. So wait for that to come in. Okay, I see another question. Can any of this be applied to SolidWorks 2018 SP5? Yes, the XML style notification, that will work in 2018 SP5. That will work in, as far as I could tell, it probably will work as far back as 2009. Because uh, that seems to be when the XML import feature was applied, and they just kind of didn't say anything about this particular feature. Um, 
so let's see. That's that one. Let's play that. Wait for the next one to come along. That's going to have. Yeah, here we go. So this is the one that I had multiple files selected. And I got one email, so I was really happy. I didn't get spammed with five emails or seven in this case. Um, and this all happened because I was just browsing around in the installation file set. Um, so under SolidWorks downloads, say I went to this one. Let's do, let's do this one. That's not a full. Some of these are more complete than others. There we go. Okay. So if I went to PDM client, I go to support, and then I went to, uh, was it ERP? Yeah, here we go. Um, notification. This is the one that kind of kicked everything off. Where they, sh they sort of show you an example. Um, I've actually modified this one already. Uh, so they show you how we can notify a group, how we can notify a user based on their login name or their first name, last name. And I was just like, oh, I've, I've just got to see what this can do. Um, so I haven't really seen much documentation on it aside from that, but I was just like, well, there's really kind of a gold mine here. We just look what we can do, anything we want, basically. Okay. Somebody said I was in EPDM in 2011. Okay. Are you, hopefully you've upgraded since. If, if not, I mean, you'll get a new, another feature that you didn't know about. <laughs> um, oh, great, great. But you probably have the pain of like, ugh, dynamic notifications. Why isn't this a thing? So... Oh, man. Uh, so I know that this was like a whole lot to swallow um, all in one sitting and in only about 40 minutes. I honestly feel like a, a good hands-on version of this presentation should be 90 to, to minutes to two hours at least. Um, but, but hopefully, you know, Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um, yeah. So, uh, but hopefully can, the file set is... Can you repeat uh, that for the, for the group? We can't see that chat. Sorry. Uh, uh, Matt was indicating that, yeah, he was kind of thrilled that this had been, or surprised that this had been around since 2009. Uh, and I don't remember how long Dispatch has been around. Also, a pretty long time, so... It's it's like the the building pieces were there, but the one piece that we needed, nobody really talked about, nobody knew about. So, you know, here it is all put together. So, anywho, um, hopefully the, the file set that I provided you will be useful in getting you there if you want to try to implement this extra feature, or, you know, perhaps even better, the built-in... Um, uh, conditional notifications will be able to s take care of you. Let's see. Um, yeah, I, I didn't type that right. Email monkey. So this is where you can get access to the file set and try to put together your own vault with this. It's basically a, like a CEX download um, and then the files that go inside the vault view There'll be a little bit more to do, plus the original presentation. I modified it for today, but it's got all of that stuff. So all the dispatch scripts and everything. So great. Well, thank you everyone for attending. Are there any other questions or anything else I can do to um, help with uh, conveying this info? Thanks so much everyone for attending.